Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenin Nanta Senamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this type of content, please consider subscribing. Data preprocessing and exploratory data analysis is very crucial to the success of every data science projects. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do basic data preprocessing and exploratory data analysis in Python using the pandas library so that you can tackle your data science projects. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is head over to the GitHub of the data professor and click on the code repository. Scroll down, click on Python. Scroll down and find Pandas Exploratory Data Analysis. Click on that. All right, and then you want to right click on the download button and save link as and save it to your computer. And then you can open up the Jupyter Notebook in your computer and follow along. Or you can go to the Google Colab and we can download it directly from GitHub. So click on the GitHub tab, search for Data Professor. Enter, and then find Pandas Exploratory Data Analysis, okay? But since I already have that, I'll just open it up. Okay, and then before we begin, let me clear all of the outputs so that we can start from scratch together. Okay, so the data that we're going to use in this tutorial will be based on the one from the previous videos where we have used the NBA player stats data directly scraped from the basketballreference.com website. And so you're going to see that the code is right here in the first block of code. So let's run that. And so what it essentially does is it will import pandas and then it will use pandas to read the contents into a data variable, whereby the content will be a data table. And then we're gonna do some basic data cleaning by removing the redundant header rows that are present more than one time in the content of the table. And so that was shown in the previous tutorial. So if you haven't yet watched that, please click on the link above. Okay, and so, you will see that the header contains several acronyms. And if you're not familiar with that, it is summarized in the following block of text here in this table where the acronym is followed by the description, right? So RK is rank, POS is the position. So H is the player's age on February 1 of the season. And the team name, the number of games played, games started, minutes played per game, okay? And so today we're gonna take a deeper look into that in terms of the exploratory data analysis. And so we're gonna use a lot of pandas in order to retrieve the data that we want to have a look at. And also we'll make some basic plots and graphs here. Okay, and so let's have a look here. So as I mentioned already, this block of code will scrape the data directly from the basketball reference website and the table data will be put into the data frame called DF2019, right? And then we're gonna drop all of the headers that are redundant and then it will be contained within the raw variable. Okay, and let's have a look at the shape of the data. So it has 708 rows, 30 columns. Let's take a look at the first few rows. So it's essentially here. Let's check for any missing values using the isNull function. And then we're gonna do a summation of how many missing values are there. And we see that there are a couple of missing values here. And let's just say that we're gonna replace all of the missing value with a number of zero. And then we're gonna check the missing value again. And we're gonna see that we have already solved the missing value issue here. And then rank is not telling us anything at the moment, so we're just going to take it out by dropping the column. And then we see that the rank column is now dropped. And we have this table data here called df. So let's write this to a CSV file. And so we're going to type in df, which is the name containing the table, and dot to CSV function. And then we're going to call it nba2019.csv. So we're going to write out a CSV file. And then we're going to have index equals to false because we don't want the index to be written out. And so let's write the file. 
and so ls to check if the file has been created and it is right here nba 2019 and then let's briefly take a look at the contents of the file in bash and so the content is here as a csv file okay and so we're going to read the data back in okay and then we assign it to the df data frame again and so the data is right here okay it looks very clean and now let's just say that you notice that it displays only the 10 rows of your data frame. So it will show the first five and the bottom five of the data. Let's say that you want to see the entire content, all of the rows. Is that possible? Yes, you could do that using the set option. So go ahead and run that and then run the data frame again. And now it will list all of the data of the entire data frame. Okay, so just in case that you want to see all of the players, and it's not possible to do it within the Jupyter Notebook. So now you can just set this option here. And let's say that you don't want to have this lengthy data frame. You could just revert it back to the default by set option and set the max row to be back to 10. Okay, and let's have a look at the data frame again. And so it looks just as before. You see the first five and the bottom five of the data frame. All right. And so let's have a look at the data type of each column of your data frame. And so we're going to see that players are objects, position is an object, team is an object, and the rest are either integers or float numbers, okay? And so let's say that we want to show specific data type in our data frame. So we could use the select D type function and include equal to the data type that we want to be shown. So if we want to show all of the numbers, it will include integer and floating numbers. Then we want to use the include equals to number argument here. And so we're going to see only the numbers. Or if we want to show only the objects, then in the argument, we're going to use include object. Okay, and it's going to show only the object, which is the player name, the position, and the team. Okay, and so when we're doing exploratory data analysis, before we dive into all of the functions, commands that could allow you to do exploratory data analysis, which might be a bit boring or quite lengthy. So why don't we focus on the fun part? Let's ask some question and let's see which commands can help us to answer our questions. Okay. And so I'm going to group this into the various headings that I will show you hereafter. So the first concept here is conditional selection. So let's say that we want to show specific rows or columns in the data set, which matches our particular condition. Okay, so let's demonstrate that with our first example. Okay, so which player scored the most points per game? Let's see how we can do that. So points is the column PTS and points here. Let's have a look at the meaning. So PTS means points per game. So in basketball, it's the number of points that a player scores in a given game. Okay, so it's the average points that are scored per game. So this is calculated by taking all of the points that the player has accumulated over the season divided by the number of games that the player plays. And so that will be the points per game. Okay, and that will be in the column PTS. And so let's have a look at the question again. So the question asks, which player scored the most points per game? And we see that there are about 700 players in the data frame. And so in order to find which player scored the most point, we have to use the function max, which will tell us the maximum value for the given variable. So in order to select the column PTS from the DF data frame, we will use df.pts. That is one way. Another way would be to use df bracket quotation pts. Okay. And so this is the selection of the particular column. And to get the maximum value, we will use the max function. Okay. And that will tell you 36.1. But it won't tell you the name of the player. Okay, so either way, it will be the same answer. So it's 36.1. So the next question is, which player scores 36.1? Okay, and that player will be the answer for our question right here. And so we have to use this thing called conditional selection. So we already know the answer to be 36.1. Okay, and so notice that this block of code here is essentially right here. 
Okay, so when we type in the data frame DF, it will display all of the players. Okay, and if I say DF a particular column, it will show the values of that column. So in order to show the player which scores the most point, we're going to type in df, open bracket, df.pts, and then double equal sign, followed by df.pts.max, and then the opening and closing parenthesis, and then the closing bracket. And that will show us that James Harden from the Houston Rockets, with the position of point guard, scores the most point at 36.1, okay? And so this will display all of the roles, the entire row, okay? So the name of the player, along with all of the data that are associated with this player. But let's say that we want to return specific values about this. Let's say that we want to know the team. So how are we going to return the name of the team? So we're going to do this by copying this block of code here. And then we're going to assign this to the data variable called player max points in order to simplify the look of the code a bit. And then we're going to call the player max points again. And then we're going to use dot TM because we're going to select the column called TM, which is the team. Okay, let's run this. And we see that the team is HOU. So it's the Houston Rockets. And so which position is the player playing as? So we're going to select only the POS column. And so the position is PG, point guard. How many games did the player play in a season? So dot G, so 78 is the answer. Okay, so that is the first answer for the first question. Okay, so now let's move on to the second question. So let's say that we want to know which player scored more than 20 points per game. Okay, so the first question was which single player had the most points scored in the game? And this one will be which player scores more than 20 points per game? And so we're going to retrieve many players here. And so the condition here will be df.pts greater than 20, which is the condition. And we're putting this as the argument inside the column selection. Okay, so inside the bracket is the condition. And df bracket means we want to select the rows containing the given condition, which is df.pts greater than 20. And so here we're going to retrieve the name of all players along with the associated data, which scores more than 20 points. Okay, so the rows are where the player scores more than 20 points per game. And so you're going to see that the middle information is missing here. So if you want to show it, you can go up and find the code about set options, and then you can run that. Okay, but we're going to move on to the next question now. So the next question is, which player had the highest three-point field goals per game? And this will be the 3P column name. And so as always, we're going to use DF and then the bracket. And inside the argument of the bracket, we're going to use the DF 3P equal equal 3F 3P dot max. So that will give you the maximal value of the 3P column. And then it will return the rows matching that condition. And so Stephen Curry is the answer, whereby he scores, on average, 5.1 three-pointers per game. Okay, and the next question is, which player had the highest assists per game? Okay, and the column name is AST. And so the same concept here, we're going to use DF and then the bracket. And inside as argument, we're going to use DF AST equal equal DF AST dot max. Okay. And that will return Russell Westbrook, where he has AST of 10.7, okay, assists of 10.7. All right. And so the next several questions will be using the group by function concept. So the question here is, which player scored the highest points from the Los Angeles Lakers? Okay, so let's have a look sequentially what does this block of code does. So first, we're going to assign a variable called LAL, and the content will use the DF data frame, and then it will group the data. And then after grouping the data by the team, it will select the specific team that we want, which is the Los Angeles Lakers. And so let's run this code and have a look. LAL. And so as you can see in the team column, all of the players here are from Los Angeles Lakers and there are 22 rows. Okay. And the full dimension of the columns are shown. So if we change LAL to something else, the team will change, right? OKC and the team will change to OKC. Okay. Let's change it back to LAL. 
Okay, and that's the answer. And so let's go to the next question. Of the five position, which position scores the most points? Okay, so in order to answer this question, the first thing that we want to do is to group by the position. So we're going to use df.groupby and then group by the position, pos, and then dot pts, which is the points, and then dot describe, which will give us the descriptive statistic. And so here we see that there are more than five positions here because there are some positions that are hybrid, meaning that some players play two positions. The player could play both as a center and a power forward, both as a power forward and a small forward, both as small forward and shooting guard, both as a power forward and a shooting guard. Okay. And so you see that the number of count here is very low. So only one or two player are playing both positions. And so let's say that we want to remove these low occurrence data how are we going to do that? So first, we're going to define a variable called position. And inside, we're going to make it a list of the five position that we want to be shown, which is the traditional position containing center, power forward, small forward, point guard, and shooting guard. Okay, and we're going to define a variable called POS with the capital letters. And then we're going to define DF open bracket and then we're going to have df open and closing bracket inside is the position and then we're going to use the is in function is in and then as argument position so what this essentially does is it will remove all of the irrelevant position out and it will display only a subset of data which contain the positions that we wanted in the list because we have only five position here it will display only the five positions that are listed here in the list which is five okay Let's run that. And so we see that there are only the five positions shown. So there are 700 rows, right? Because the hybrid position will contain two, two, which is four, two, six now, one, one, so it's eight. And so before it was 708 rows, and now we have 700 rows. So eight are missing, and that is the correct answer. Okay, so now let's take a look at the descriptive again. And so we see a beautiful answer here, the five positions, and we get the count, and then we get the mean and the standard deviation, and also the quartiles as well, and also the maximal value. So here we're going to see that the average points are relatively eight plus minus, okay, plus minus five and six points. So we're going to see that the most points are scored by the position of center, 8.78, right? But still, they're roughly similar, okay? And interestingly, we can see that the point guard also had the highest standard deviation as well. So probably means that there are several point guards scoring quite high here. Okay, and so let's take a look now at the visuals. Let's make some histograms. But before doing that, let's create the subset of the data frame. So here we're going to select the columns, position, and the points. And we're going to define it into a new data frame called PTS. And then we're going to select only the five position. Okay, and let's run that. And so we have the five positions here and the points column. And so let's show the histogram. So this is the built-in function of pandas. As you can see that we're defining the PTS data frame and we're defining the PTS column. And then we're going to use the built-in function of hist, which is going to display the histogram. And then we're going to make several histogram subplot. And that will be according to the POS, which is according to the position. And because we have five position, it will create five separate histogram plot shown here. Let's say that we don't like the layout. Layout is a bit off. We could specify the option to be layout and then as the tuples we will use 1,5 and so it will show you one row five columns and let's say that the width dimension is suboptimal we could do that further by customizing the fixed size option to be 16 and 2 okay and now it looks quite good okay and you could go on and further customize the number of bins that are shown in the graph here okay so this is the built-in of pandas and let's say that if we want to use Seaborn to do the same thing. Okay, and this is the Seaborn code. Okay, so we're going to import Seaborn and matplotlib. And here we're going to use the sns.facet grid, which will create the multiple subplot that you see here and the input data frame. And then the multiple subplot will be created according to the position column. As you can see that the position column is broken down into the five unique values containing the center, power forward, small forward, shooting guard, and point guard. Okay, and it shows this as a facet grid. 
All right, so let's move on to the box plot. So here we're going to use the PTS data frame dot box plot. And so this is the built in box plot function of pandas. And as argument, we're going to define column equal to PTS and by position again. So we're going to have the five boxes inside the plot here. If we don't define this, let's see what happens. We see only the consolidated points per game. But if we say by position, this one box will be separated into five individual positions. And each position will be given its own box. Okay. And let's say that we don't like this box plot and we want to do it in Seaborn. And so we could do this using the sns.boxplot function and the argument x equal to the position, y equal to the points, because x is the position and y here is the points. And the data is the PTS data frame. Okay, and it looks quite good here. Very simple code and looks really nice with the colors as well. Now let's say that we want to show the box plot and we want to see the individual data points for each of the box. We will use the strip plot function and jitter to be true. Otherwise points will be superimposed or it will stack up into the same point if there are multiple points in that same position. So jitter will randomize the number so that it will not overlap so much. Instead of being overlapped, it will move out a bit. Okay. And then here we're going to use alpha transparency of 0 0.8. Okay. And so it looks like this. So we see the actual data points on top of the box plot. Okay, and so let's now have a look at the heat map. And so we're going to compute the correlation matrix, which will be the data that we're going to use to make the heat map. And so we're going to assign the CORR variable and the DF data frame will be used to compute the correlation. And so here we obtain the correlation matrix by using only the df.corr function here. And so it is a 26 row by 26 column because we have 26 variables. And so it will be a pairwise correlation matrix. So we have 26 column. And so we're going to have each of the 26, we're going to compute the pairwise Pearson's correlation coefficient, meaning that variable x1 and x1, it has a correlation of one, right? x2 and x1 has a correlation coefficient, x1, x1 row here, x1 and x3, x1 and x4, x1 and x5, etc. And, and then we will move on to the next row, right? X2 and X1, X2 and X2, X2 and X3, right? And then etc. And then we move on to the third row, to the fourth row, to the fifth row, until we move on to all of the 26 row. And so essentially it will be 26 by 26, but as you will see here, they are diagonal, meaning the one below and above the diagonal of one will be mirror image of one another. Okay, because they are the same pairwise correlation coefficient, meaning that H and G is H and G right here, right? GS and H is H and GS. Okay, and the same is the same value, just mirror image. Okay, so I will show you how to make the diagonal version or the full box version of the correlation matrix in the format of heat map. Okay, so let's make the heat map and it's as simple as using the heat map function and as argument the CORR data frame which contains the correlation coefficient matrix value. And so this will give you a heat map of the intercorrelation matrix of each variable with one another. And you see that the white color here are the diagonal having correlation coefficient of one. And so when the color is lighter color, it will have correlation coefficient of one. And if it has darker color, it means that the correlation coefficient will be low. Okay. And if the color is red, it means that the correlation coefficient will be about 0.5. Okay, so this is a gradient scale, all right? And let's say that we want to adjust the figure size. Then we'll have to use the matplotlib functions here as well by defining fig and ax equal to plt.subplots and then the argument here to be fig size and then the tuple of 7,5. And then sns.heatmap, we're going to make the heat map as a square. So we're going to say square equal to true. And so notice that we have a square heat map now and the size is adjusted to what we wanted. Okay. And so let's create another version. I got this from the link here from Seaborn. And so we will mask or hide half of the heat map because they have a value that are just essentially mirror image of the bottom part. And so we're going to show only the bottom half. And so the mask variable here will allow us to do that. Okay. All right, and so let's move on to the scatter plot. Let's have a look at the data frame again. 
Okay, and we're going to select columns that have numerical data type. And so as I have mentioned above, we're going to use the select D types function. Include to be number. And so here we see only the numbers. And then we're going to select the first five columns. And so we're going to assign this content into the number variable. Okay, and then here we're going to select only the first five columns. So here we're going to define number dot I lock and I lock means index location and then bracket. And then the first value that we see is the colon colon here means that we're going to select all of the rows. Okay. And then we're going to have comma and then the colon five means that we're going to select columns zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. So it's going to select the, the first five columns. All right. So here we select the first five columns. And this is selection based on the index number. Okay, and let's say that we want to select the columns based on the column names. And it's like the same concept that we selected the positions, the five positions that I have created above here, the center, power forward, small forward, point guard, shooting guard, right? And so we're going to use the same concept. We're going to define a variable called selections, and then the content will be the list. Okay, it will be a list of the column names, and then we're going to define DF and then opening and closing bracket, and then the argument will be selections. Okay, and then it will display data containing only these columns. Let's have a look. All right. And it does exactly as we expected. It will display age, game, steel, block, assist, and points. Okay. And so now let's make the scatter plot grid because above here we just created our data. And so let's click on the five column and all column at the same time because all column will take a long time to compute. And so we're going to create scatter plot grid for the first five columns. And so here we see that this is the scatter plot grid showing the scatter plot between the various columns, age, game, steel, block, assist, points, with the same set of columns, points, assist, block, steel, game, age. And notice that the perfect line here means that the columns are compared with its own column. So it is a self comparison, age and age, games and game, steel and steel, right? Block and block, assist and assist points and points. Okay, and half of the data will be mirror image of one another. So same concept like the correlation matrix heat map. All right, and so now we see that the all columns here are computed for the scatter plot. And so we see that there are 26 by 26 plot grid here. And so the diagonals are shown here and the remaining 26 are shown here. And so the upper half and the lower half are essentially the same information. And so we see a lot of positive correlation or no correlation at all, right? Or positive correlation, right? So we see that some variables have positive correlation, some variables don't have positive correlation. Field goal and points. Okay, so there's a positive correlation. Field goal attempts and points. Two points and po okay, so so they are related to scoring, right? So field goal attempt are the number of times they shoot in order to score, and so that is directly related to points scored in a game. Okay. So congratulations, you have now done some basic data pre-processing and exploratory data analysis. So as always, in order to learn data science, you have to do data science and feel free to apply this block of code for your data set of interest in order to expand your data science portfolio. And so let me know which data set you are working on and let me know your success in applying this set of code to your own data set. So if you find value in this video, please give it a thumbs up and please enjoy the journey. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.